Hello, Your Story fans. How are you? Today we have Gururaj Deshpande with us. He's one of India's first entrepreneurs. He left the country in 1973, but by 1987, he sold his first company, Coral Networks, a router developer for 15 million. But that was just the beginning. In another decade, he sold Cascade Communications for 4 billion to Ascend, which brought him into the limelight of one of the greatest entrepreneurs in America. He is given back to India in the form of the Deshpande Foundation, which supports health and education. He is with us today. He is going to talk about entrepreneurship 2.0 and where India is heading in the future. Hello, Mr. Deshpande. Thank you. To begin with, Mr. Deshpande, I want to ask you about India's startup policy. Uh, what do you think about it? You know, to me, I think uh, Startup India, Make in India, Digital India, they're all very good things. But we just need to make sure that we interpret them properly. Yeah. Make in India should not be what Taiwan and China did 35 years ago, just making things for other people. Mm -hmm. I think to me, as long as we can combine all these three mm -hmm. and start using technology to make things for people living in India, mm -hmm. the billion people, yeah. then I think we can come up with very profitable, good solutions, but also yeah. export the solutions to the other four billion people that live in the world. We've been talking a lot about the policy, but what kind of entrepreneurs do you expect to participate in verticals? Uh, is it industrial internet, connected vehicles, or is it connected health? Oh, yes, I mean, they're all technologies, yes. right? I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of nanomaterials, there's going to be a uh, lot of innovation in energy, in all of these things. Mm -hmm. But the question is, an entrepreneur, you know, doesn't really innovate core technology, mm -hmm. but he applies that technology to different sets of problems. Mm -hmm. and, and entrepreneurs should not get stuck in trying to think that they should innovate these solutions for people living in the United States or Europe or something all the time. Because somehow the IT mindset is always solving problems for people who live outside of the country. There's a huge opportunity for entrepreneurs in India to solve problems for people living in India, which can be very profitable and can be also exported. Apparently only 10% of the engineers are employable. How do you expect the rest of them to become entrepreneurs by themselves, uh, especially when you think that uh, the startup policy is looking at all ideas uh, from all people from all walks of life. So to solve a lot of the problems we're talking about, you don't need huge amount of technology, mm. but you need the passion okay. and wanting to solve the problem. So I don't think the lack of technology in India is going to be the big thing because, you know, technology becomes more and more commodity. For example, when I left in 73, there was a huge difference between what you could see in India, what you could see in US, mm -hmm. right? You could never do in India what you could do in US. But now, there's very little difference. I mean, most of the technology available there is available here. And so, and the technology becomes more and more user-friendly. So, it's really desire of the people mm -hmm. wanting to solve a problem okay. and just putting things together. To me, that's more important than really being able to get deep into the technology for everything. Okay, when I met uh, Ratan Tata a few years ago, and he was, he was really worried that India has to provide 3 million, 300 million jobs by 2030. And I think that's a task for all of us, and I don't think we are ready. But if we start today with the startup policy, w how do we go ahead, go ahead and solve problems? What's going to happen to this country? Right. You know, I, th I think a lot of studies show that mm -hmm. the world needs about 75 billion mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Million, you mean? 75 million entrepreneurs globally. Mm -hmm. And so the share of the Indian entrepreneurs is 10 million. And if 10 million people can hire 100 people each, mm -hmm. then That's you got the number. <laughs> so I think, I think we, we just need a lot of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs in all segments, not just sort of hardware, software, okay. life sciences, and just mm -hmm. a few of those. Uh, earlier when we were having a cup of tea, uh, you said policy should be thought of as a proof of concept. Uh, what exactly do you mean by that? Uh, are you saying that policy should not be in isolation when it's implemented? So, you know, I think, I think you can, uh, I've, I've, I've sort of spent a lot of time thinking about innovation and how innovators work. Mm -hmm. So policymakers, think tanks, universities, uh, they're all very smart people who comprehend mm -hmm. very conceptual ideas. But unfortunately, over the course of time, they become very clubby and they get further and further removed from the real situations. So when they come up with solutions, most of the time those solutions 
have two problems. Number one, a lot of times they're impractical and not really applicable. And secondly, even if they come up with a great solution, there's no capacity to absorb that solution. So I've become a big believer that number one, we need to create the capacity. Mm -hmm. So we want people to say, hey, I want a solution. And secondly, uh, get those people to create the solution themselves. And, and do policy by proof of concept. What I mean by that is that let's use the philanthropic money to do a lot of experiments. And if something works in one place, let's duplicate it in two, and then four, and then eight. At some point, it becomes so obvious it's a good thing that at that point, we make it a part of the policy. Thanks, Mr. Deshpande, for uh, being part of this interview. Great, thank, thank you. you. Already the startup policy in place, now it has to be implemented. I had requested the chief secretary, he had to take one or two meetings. It will be driven by the industry. Electric bikes is a new phenomenon, so and all our deliveries that we directly do are going to be happening on these electric scooters.